Hi friends, my name is Jenny and I'm back today to do another video. Also, I'm burning a candle right now in my room and it smells so good. I bought it at a craft fair yesterday and it smelled good before I was burning it, but now it smells like even better. It's like so calming and nice. I don't know, it didn't say like the notes or anything, which is kind of annoying, but such is life. This is gonna be the start of my June Reader at the Last Arc vlog in which I'm going to be reading two short story collections. The two short story collections I'll be talking about in this vlog are Sight Fidelity by Claire Boyles and Filthy Animals by Brandon Taylor. As per usual with my first check-in for this vlog I have already started Sight Fidelity. I've read the first three stories which means I'm about a third of the way through this collection and honestly I'm loving it so far. The first story of the collection is definitely so far my favorite and honestly one of my favorite stories that I've read in a long time. It was called Ledgers and it was about this young woman who's an ornithologist i.e someone who studies birds if you're not in the know of ecology terminology but she's an ornithologist and her dad has been a rancher out in the west all of these stories take place primarily it seems in colorado although i think some of the stories take place in like wyoming as well but her father owned a ranch and she just grew up with her father her mother died when she was born like while giving birth to her and our father is dying he has dementia i believe and so and to potentially he also has like als or Parkinson's. i think he has parkinson's and so he is you know dying and kind of suffering through a lot of these like long-term very sad chronic illnesses that kill people over, over a long period of time and so she's returned to live with him but they had to sell his ranch because they needed to pay for his medical bills and so it's basically a story of her trying to both kind of reconcile these feelings that she has about her father dying who's someone she was really close to and someone who obviously loved her very deeply but kind of didn't express that in explicit ways with the new owner of the ranch who is trying to kind of expand his ranch into this area where an endangered species lives i believe it's a like kind of grouse if i remember correctly and she is kind of remembering how her father like helped her care for this endangered species and realizing that that was like a way that her father showed his love for her is not ranching in this particular part of his land and i just thought it was like so beautiful so kind of filled with emotion in such a short amount of time which is honestly why i love short stories is sometimes they can just capture a very specific feeling and i feel like that one did a really great job and was great start off to the collection and then the second two stories that i've read actually are connected so i think they're we're gonna follow a family of sisters through four different stories because i think there's four of them there might only be three of them though but i've read the first two sisters um and that was really interesting especially because i always find it fun i mean i I think I've said this several times before on my channel, but I love interconnected stories, especially if I don't know that they're going to be interconnected. And so that was fun to kind of realize that one of the sisters in the second story, her name was the same as a person mentioned in the first story. And so I kind of did the like search feature through the, my Kindle and realized that they are meant to be the same person. And so we're following those two, but they're set in two different time frames too, which was really nice as the first story was kind of about this woman who has very young children and her husband is kind of in the process of leaving and uh, you can tell that he's no longer going to be in the picture in the future but then in the second story she was kind of in a much better place in her life and so I liked that the second story was not about her but you got to see that the kind of path that she started going on in the first story obviously was successful for her. I really like that element of interconnected stories. I've been really enjoying Sight Fidelity so far. I feel like it's a really great, very strong collection. I've still not started Filthy Animals yet, but I will be starting that one soon. Hi pals, it is late on Sunday night. I'm just getting ready to go to bed, but I wanted to check in about Sight Fidelity because earlier today I read one of my new favorite stories of the collection that was making me think about a lot of other things that I wanted to kind of also mention on the vlog now that I'm you know it's fresh in my mind so that was Sister Agnes Mary in the spring of 2012 which is the third of the interconnected short stories about the three sisters and Sister Mary is a Catholic nun she joined the nunnery when she was it sounds like a young adult you know 18 19 years old and she's been in the nunnery this story takes place when she's about 78 years old so she's been in the number nunnery for like 60 70 years or maybe she's like 88 years old because i think she's been in the nunnery for about um and in the catholic 
church for about 70 years and she is protesting a fracking site that they are building very close to the playground and the school of the Catholic church um you know of the like preschool elementary school that is managed by the catholic church and she has spent much of her life as a kindergarten teacher at this school but she also has a background in ecology the catholic church paid for her to go to school and it really is about these questions of environmental activism and its relationship to catholicism and christianity more broadly which is actually interesting because i was talking about mere christianity which i was kind of disappointed by in my may wrap-up which i filmed earlier today which i'll put a link to up in the cards above but i was thinking about how for me christian theology is so much more interesting when thinking about these questions of kind of as i said in that video like black liberation environmental activism radical change um, and the ways that Christianity can be used in that way um, and I think that this story kind of touched on that in such a beautiful and kind of heartfelt way and that she as a nun who's been part of the Catholic Church for 70 you know the vast majority of her life 70 years she's thinking about these questions like at one point in the story she's praying to God and she says if you don't want all these things too meaning the kind of world to be kept in a way that allows for other creatures to survive i'd like to know why you bothered making them at all and the story just kind of keeps coming back to this idea that many christians but obviously not all christians believe that part of the role of christians is to be stewards of the land and that that is something that is important environmental stewardship is a central tenet of christianity and that god has given us this land to take care of and we need to be active in that management and that and taking care of that land which i th just thought was really well explored in this story but that's also a topic that i've thought about in the past and kind of engaged with some other media about so i just wanted to quickly mention those things as well the first of which was a new yorker article that i read at the beginning of this year i think and it was by david owens and i don't remember the title of it but i'll definitely put it in the description box below but it was about a young woman who is doing arc gis mapping of the lands that are owned by the catholic church because she's a member of the catholic church and she believes that given that the catholic church is the largest landowner in the world that that land should one have someone who knows where all of it is and where what the status of that land is and to have it be better managed because that is a potential solution to climate adaptation is managing this land in a way that is better for protecting biodiversity, for managing climate change, for adapting to climactic changes in general. And so this is basically just a profile on this woman who is working on this project. Um, but I just thought that profile was so fascinating and really thought-provoking in terms of this relationship and then also the gravy podcast which was just put out by the southern foodways alliance had an episode also at the end of 2020 beginning of 2021 that was called christians take on climate change and it was about pastors particularly in the south given that it's the southern foodways alliance that are using their church as a form of environmental activism um, and one of the people that interviewed in that podcast episode explicitly says that they believe that their role in part as a agent is that what it's called like an agent of god is to be an environmental steward and to you know use environmental activism to further god's hopes for us and so i just thought that was really interesting and i'm really glad that that so I touched on that because I think it's a really interesting topic. I definitely think that I will be pre-ordering a copy, a finished copy, because I do think I'll want to return to this collection. So I only have a few stories left and I'm hoping to finish them in the next couple of days. So I'll definitely check in once I have more thoughts on more stories. Hi friends, so it is Thursday evening and I realized that I finished Sight Fidelity a couple of days ago and never updated you on my final thoughts so I figured I would do that now. I did finish it Tuesday morning and I absolutely loved this collection. I ended up giving it five stars and I pre-ordered a finished copy because I, th I do think I definitely will want to return to the stories in this collection. So I just really loved the way that the environment and protection of the environment and the intersection of that with kind of familiar relationships and even relationships of greater connection like the story about the catholic nun that i think i talked about last time i checked in i just thought that the ways that those themes were kind of interwoven was really beautifully done and i feel like i mean granted those are themes that i'm really interested in in terms of like family dynamics and environmental protection and the, the kind of relationships that we have with other people and how those relationships 
can change over time. All of those things are things I really look for and I thought they were done really well in this collection. I also love interconnected short story collections and this one did a fantastic job of that. I feel like it really captured what is so wonderful about interconnected short stories in that you can see a character who you have followed in a previous story or who you will follow in a future story at a different point in their life and it's not I feel like it just really rings true to life and that the character is not centered anymore. You know, it's no longer their story, but they are still an important part of that story. And I just love that that was kind of true of this collection and that people would pop in and out and people would have connections to a person that you just didn't really anticipate that I really liked. So that ended up happening. As I said, there were three sisters and they each had a story and they also connected to a few of the other characters in other stories and then there was also a family unit and then the son of that family was married to another person who had her own story. The son never had a story but the like wife had a story and then the wife's childhood best friend who was somehow involved in some things with the son had a story and so it was just really interesting kind of to have all these different individual stories that definitely they very much read as individual stories. You don't have to. I think you could read any story in this collection and kind of be satisfied but I liked the ways that they were interconnected. I thought it was really satisfying and did justice to the things I most appreciate about interconnected short stories. I also just found the writing to be really beautiful. A lot of them were really poignant heartfelt stories that I always enjoy reading and so yeah I really enjoyed this collection quite a lot and would highly recommend it if these are topics that also are of interest to you. Morrison, can you stop making so much noise? Morrison. But I haven't started Filthy Animals by Brandon Taylor yet. I'm hoping to do some Caribathon reading, which I think the Caribathon vlog that I'm doing will be up before this vlog goes up. I think. I don't remember my, like, video schedule, but I think that's the case. But I haven't actually started that vlog, which is funny. I'm about to start it right now. But I'm going to do some Caribathon reading first and then hopefully jump into Filthy Animals and hopefully I will have time for that. I've been only reading, like, one book at a time aside from my like project book which I talked about in my like summer TBR video and honestly I've been really liking that especially because I'm much busier now with my summer job and it's just a lot more physically demanding and exhausting than my previous job was and so only having one book to read is really nice because that's the book I can bring to work and read when I have like time to read at work and then I also it's just like the one book that in the afternoons if I want to read that's the book I I'm choosing and then in the evenings as well like before I get ready for bed I'm reading my like project book section each day and then however much of my like one other book that I'm reading I want to read and I've just not had a ton of time to like listen to audiobooks so I haven't really been doing that much audiobook reading so yeah that's been really enjoyable wow this is a good angle <laughs> I just started Reading Filthy Animals by Brandon Taylor, which I was going to try to read a different book in between because I, as you will have seen from my Caribathon vlog, I was reading a short story collection and I was kind of burnt out on short stories because the last book I read, both books I read for the Caribathon were kind of, in a way, short story collections and then before that I read Sight Fidelity. But then I literally just like opened the first story of Filthy Animals because I just kind of wanted to see what it was like and now I'm like totally sucked in. I totally forgot how much I just absolutely love Brandon Taylor and his work. I, I don't know. There's something about it that just feels so honest and real to me that I just love. I, and I love how I don't, I can't even describe it, but just the way he thinks, I think is also the way that I think. And I love it. So yeah, I'm literally halfway, maybe not even halfway through the first story, but definitely going to continue reading this and not try to read a different book in between because I love Brandon Taylor. So that's about all for now. Hello friends, so it is in the evening of the 17th of June, which is Thursday. I'm just opening a can of cat food, don't mind me. Sitting here on the floor feeding the cats and I thought I would also update you on the filthy animals because I think I'm probably gonna finish this tomorrow and I figured I would update you with my kind of in the midst of it thoughts before I finish it tomorrow morning, either at work or shortly after work. Yes, I have. Hello. Oh, thank you. Lizzie. But I thought I'd kind of give you some thoughts. I am not loving it as much as I loved Real Life, but also Real Life was my favorite book that I read last year, so it's kind of hard 
the beat, but I am enjoying some of the stories. I think my favorite part is that there are a series of interconnected stories that are following the kind of same group of characters and kind of some similar characters that are all connected to one main character who we met in the first story, which was one of my favorites, which was called Potluck. And it reminded me a lot of the dinner party scene in real life. I feel like the two were inspired by a similar thing or kind of came from the same idea because they both had very similar vibes but different things happened um, but also the same things happened in both of them so I thought that was interesting it really kind of brought me back to the vibe of real life and kind of pulled me right into the collection right away so I feel like fans of real life will like that first story because it kind of will bring them back into Brandon Taylor's writing with a kind of familiar scene so I enjoyed that story quite a lot and then the rest kind of every other story has been not about that kind of group of people that we met in Potluck and so those stories I've been enjoying less. I feel like some of those stories the non-interconnected ones feel a little similar to one another and so far I'm not really connecting with them. I did let's see I think my favorite story that has been not connected at least so far to the interconnected stories was Anna Cleaves which I think he's published separately which I'll put a link to down in the description box below if you're interested in kind of checking out one of the stories. I thought that story was really strong and it captured some kind of different themes in terms of queerness and coming to terms with that identity and figuring out how that relates to kind of the rest of your world particularly if you've been someone who's very ingrained in kind of a heterosexual world and then you discover this element of yourself. I thought that was done in a really interesting way and it was also about two women which most of the stories are about men obviously because Brandon Taylor is a queer man but yeah so I liked that story quite a lot and then I as I said been enjoying the interconnected stories. I only have three stories left so I definitely will be finishing this by tomorrow morning but I do think this would not be like the five star read that real life was but I also am fine with that because you know real life was kind of its own thing and I am intrigued that this collection does read in a lot of ways very similarly to real life so I was expecting kind of a different direction but at the same time I enjoy the world that Brendan Taylor kind of has created and lives in with this graduate school academia focused small town people are depressed and queer like I am really into that vibe because I feel like that's very akin also to like my world despite not being in graduate school as of this moment but will be very soon so I appreciate that kind of world and so I like it in his fiction but at the same time it feels very similar to real life in a lot of ways but I also wanted to share that today I went to go pick up my pre-order of Sight Fidelity which just came in a few days ago I think this came out Yes, this came out on the 15th, so that was two days ago because it's Thursday. And so I'm super excited about this. I obviously have talked about this previously in this vlog, but I loved this book and I'm really excited to kind of revisit it in physical form and potentially, you know, dog ear the pages and stuff that I like to do. And I also think I might check out some of these authors that have been blurbed on the back. I've read Pam Houston before, but I've never even heard of Molly Antipole. Kimberly King Parsons or Lee Newman so I kind of want to check them out because I feel like if they write similar stuff to this I will probably get on with it because I did really like the kind of gritty but very feminist environmentalism that was happening in these stories so yeah super excited about that but I also wanted to quickly share because my bookstore that I pre-ordered this from which is a feminist bookstore in Decatur which is very close to where I live in Atlanta reopened today. Today was like their first day that they were actually in person shopping which was wonderful. I told them I was so excited and they were like we're so excited too and so I visited after work to pick up my book and also just to get browse a bit and I found this book which is just like the joys of bookstore browsing you know finding something that you've never heard of before is just one of my all-time favorite things. Also shopping the staff picks selection of an indie bookstore is also one of my favorite things but this was Left Elsewhere Finding the Future in Radical Rural America and it's edited by Elizabeth Catt and includes William J. Barber, Nancy Eisenberg, a person whose name I can't pronounce, and Matt Stoller and apparently this is Boston Review Forum. I have no idea what this is. It's kind of like a journal type thing but from the back it sounded really intriguing kind of up my alley in that it's about progressive movements in rural America and kind of talking back to the ideas put forth about rural America being this kind of backwards place which is something that's of great interest to me so I wanted to check this out and also I love Elizabeth Katz's work. I read What You Are Getting or What We're 
know what you're getting wrong about Appalachia back in February, I wanna say, and I love that. I give it five stars. One of my favorite books of the year so far. So I'm intrigued about this one. It's also very short and like, it's kind of short essays. It sounds like there's like a forum that I think Elizabeth has has like, I think Elizabeth Cat has like written an essay and then people are talking back to that essay. And then there's other independent essays. I'm not really sure, but I will read this at some point. I'll let you know what it's about. So yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to share right now. The cat wants to go back out the door, so I should probably let him back out. Also, please ignore my um, stuff back there. But this is kind of fun angle otherwise. Let me know. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I feel like it shows off the rearrangement that I've done in my room, which I'm very pleased with. So that's fun. So I'm gonna probably read another, oh, you don't need to see my candle, it's so bright. Um, probably read another filthy animal story tonight and then finish the last two tomorrow morning and I'll give you my final thoughts and wrap up this vlog tomorrow, which is Friday. Yay, pizza party day at work. Okay, the cat really has to go, so I'm gonna go now, bye. The other thing I just wanted to mention, also I love my yoga poses poster. I don't think I've ever showed it to you, but it's pretty fun. But I wanted to mention that this whole month, I've pretty much just been reading two books, one of which is Fool's Fate, which I talked about in my summer and TBR plans video as like my project book that I'm reading all summer long. And then just like whatever other book I am reading, whether that's for a vlog or for something else. And I didn't realize, I mean, I knew I read very fast, but I've been getting through books like every couple of days, which when I'm reading like five or six books at a time just like doesn't happen as frequently because you're getting through each book much more slowly even though you're reading a lot of pages so I'm reading less but I'm getting through books faster. I'm also reading shorter books pretty much. I've been reading shorter books since the start of this month so it's been just very interesting that reading only one book at a time means you finish the books faster. Who knew? Really? Not me obviously um but I just thought that was a fun tidbit that I wanted to share because I find it very interesting that I am not reading as much because I keep a uh, like track of my number of pages read each day in my bullet journal and I'm reading a fair amount but with this job I just don't have as much time to read as I have in the past. I think I've talked about this previously in this vlog or in my other vlog that I've been kind of doing in tandem but I am still getting through books really fast which is good to know particularly given like going into grad school when I'm not planning on reading a bunch of books all at once because that's just like an unnecessary stressor for my life but I still can get through books relatively quickly just because I read fast even if I'm just like reading a little bit you know I have a small-ish chunk of time during the day because I don't have a ton of time I mean it's like 45 minutes maybe in the morning that I can dedicate to reading and then reading in the evening I still am getting through books pretty fast so that's exciting information to know. Hi everyone so it is Saturday afternoon of June 19th and I did finish Filthy Animals yesterday morning at work and then it was funny actually my co-worker who is like my co-counselor knows that I read a lot because I always seem to be reading during times when I don't have to like actively be leading activities like the kids are doing free time or something and we had a bunch of free time yesterday because it was Friday so we just kind of like do whatever and the kids just like mostly play in the playground and do other like fun things because it's the Friday of summer camp but I finished my book in the morning and he was like you don't bring your Kindle today like later in the day when I was just kind of wandering around and I was like no I finished my book and I don't have another book to read because I was gonna be starting a buddy read with Courtney for the roundhouse and I'd left it here at home but I just thought that was a funny tip but, but I did finish Filthy Animals yesterday morning and I did enjoy it the last three stories two of them were part of the like kind of interconnected novella that's been happening throughout the narrative and that second to last story of the interconnected novella took a turn for kind of a weird direction for the story to take I wasn't really sure what was going on it kind of made me a bit uncomfortable similar to the story I think that Brandon Taylor had in kink but I'm kind of glad that I read the kink collection. I read that back in December and I didn't really like the collection as a whole but I did like Brandon Taylor's story in that collection and I feel like that was a nice kind of bridge between like real life to kink to this filthy animals collection because this collection's a lot grittier and kind of more raw and uncomfortable in different ways than real life was which is somewhat surprising because I have seen some people critique real life for feeling really kind of 
gritty and uncomfortable in sections, particularly around discussions of like sex and trauma and the relationship of those two things, which I think is very fair for real life as well as for this collection. But it's kind of nice to kind of have that bridge of the kink story that was in this anthology all about BDSM and kind of other types of relationships, sexual or romantic or otherwise, in that collection. It was just kind of intriguing because the second to last story of the Aaron Connected stories also took a similar turn, kind of like that, but then things didn't work out. It was just kind of interesting. I don't fully know what I was meant to get from that second to last story. But then I liked the final story, which was called Meat, that was the kind of conclusion of the novella. And I liked that the novella was the first story and the last story, as it kind of encapsulated the whole collection in a really cohesive way. So I liked that final story. I think that it kind of captured things and ended on a more hopeful note than real life did. So I appreciated that this novella was a bit more of a kind of positive spin in some regards than the story that's very similar in real life that happens that's a lot more kind of unfinished. And then the kind of story in between was one of the stories that's unconnected and it was a really interesting story about a young woman who is living with her grandparents who it sounds like have kind of raised her and her brother is gay but really looks up to his grandfather who after coming out as gay to his grandparents that put a large strain on their relationship and it was basically about forgiveness and acknowledging queer identities in familial structures and just a kind of complicated narrative that often happens surrounding coming out regarding your sexuality. I think it took some of the themes that were being discussed and brought a new light to them that I really appreciated. So overall I thought the collection was good. I ended up giving it four stars. I didn't love it as much as real life, which I feel like comes as no surprise given how I've talked about it during this vlog and also given that real life was my favorite fiction book that I read last year. I thought that there were parts of this that I just love, like I love Brandon Taylor's writing style, I love being in his head. I think he is such a fascinating person and his perceptions on life are, as I said right at the beginning of when I was reading Filthy Animals, very similar to, I think, the perceptions that I make about people, but in a lens that obviously is different from my own lens. We obviously come from different places, but I think at the same time some of our observations are very similar. So I really like Brandon Taylor for that reason, and I did enjoy this collection overall. I think anything Brandon Taylor writes, I will enjoy reading because I love his writing style. This just, as a collection, didn't quite land for me and that may also be too because like right before it I read Sight Fidelity and this just like captured everything that I love in short stories and also in like my personal interest outside of reading and so that may have also impacted how I felt about Filthy Animals. I'm not sure but I did enjoy Filthy Animals for the most part. I do think if you're a big fan of real life that you would probably enjoy this collection. If you didn't like real life I don't think you'll like Filthy Animals because I think Filthy Animals touches on all the things that real life touches on but in ways that are grittier, that are darker, that are less easy to kind of digest and think about. I mean I think real life captures a bit more of like the racism of academia which was not as central of a focus in this collection. This collection was a lot more about depression and trauma and suicide and trauma surrounding homosexuality. That was a part of real life for sure, but that wasn't to me the primary focus of real life, whereas that definitely took center stage in this collection. So I'm going to make of that information what you will, but I do hope that if you are interested in either of these short story collections that this vlog has kind of helped you grapple with whether or not you want to pick them up. Additionally, if you are new to my channel, I'd love to have you stick around and subscribe. I make this type of vlog style content pretty frequently and then I also make more traditional booktube content as well. I post pretty much every Sunday, although things may be changing in the coming months, who knows. And yeah, I think that's about everything. I hope you're having a great rest of your day whenever you watch this. It is a gloomy, rainy Saturday here where I am, so I'm gonna continue to sit in my bed and edit my videos and read my books. I think that's everything and I will talk to you next time. Bye.